question. We have one from Nargis. Let's see what he's asking. I'd like to know what are the first warning signs of prostate cancer? And I'm so sorry, Nargis. I said he, but it is a she. And that's a great question. What are the warning signs, doctor? Thank you, Nargis. Great question. Um, unfortunately, there aren't a ton of uh, warning signs for prostate cancer, which is why we use the PSA uh, blood test for screening for prostate cancer as well as digital rectal exams. So typically when men come to the office, they say, I feel perfectly fine. I've got no symptoms whatsoever. And unfortunately, early prostate cancer doesn't prevent with, present with a lot of symptoms. And so it's up to us to try to navigate in and around that challenge. All right. And doctor, I want to backtrack a little bit. Let's just kind of do the prostate 101. Uh, tell us what the prostate is, where is it located, and what's its job? A few questions there. Sure. Uh, so the prostate's uh, part of the male reproductive system. It's a small walnut-sized organ that sits between the bladder and the penis. When men pee, the urine starts in the bladder. That pee goes through the center of the, uh, of the prostate, down the urethra, and uh, out the tip of the penis. Prostate makes prostatic fluid, which, which helps nurture the sperm during ejaculation. And PSA, which is a prime ingredient of that prostatic fluid, actually helps that sperm make its, all, make its way all the way to the egg for fertilization. Typically, that, that prostate also sits right in front of the rectum. So during digital rectal examinations, that's how pro the urologists are able to feel the prostate to do an appropriate exam. Age, should someone start getting screened in terms of prostate cancer? What is the age today? Sure, it's a little bit controversial. Over the years, at least the last two decades, there have been, there's been some controversy about the, the perfect age when men should get screened. Moffitt Cancer Center is part of uh, the NCI, or is an NCI-designated hospital, and typically we follow what we call the National uh, Comprehensive Cancer Center guidelines, or the NCCN network guidelines. And those uh, guidelines recommend starting PSA screening and prostate cancer screening at age 45 for men without risk factors. Typically, if you've got a low PSA and a normal prostate exam at that time, then you can go to every other year screening if that PSA is under one. If the PSA is between one and three, then typically we recommend annual screening with PSA and prostate exams. There are some certain groups that, that have higher risk factors for prostate cancer. We typically recommend earlier screening for those folks. I have some follow-up questions to all that. You mentioned the word controversy. Why is there? What is it? Well, there, there are some studies. Um, a while back, the USPFTF, uh, the United States Preventive Task Force Services, uh, kind of downgraded PSA screening um, because there was some longitudinal studies to suggest that it wasn't as helpful as people initially thought. There's a lot of uh, urologists that feel that that's not necessarily the case and a lot of studies to support uh, the use of PSA screening um, in populations of men. And over the past decade, when we've seen PSA screening going down because of these recommendations, we've actually seen the incidence of prostate cancer going up. And doctor, you mentioned a few seconds ago risk factors. Can we talk about those risk factors? And is it an assumption to think that all men are at risk for prostate cancer? So all men are at risk for prostate cancer, but there are some uh, categories of people that are at higher risk for developing prostate cancer. Those men that have a first degree relative with prostate cancer are at our higher risk uh, for developing prostate cancer. Um, African Americans are at high risk for developing prostate cancer and higher grade prostate cancer. And uh, there are some genetic mutations that are associated with prostate cancer. If you think about uh, breast cancer, you think about the BRCA mutations for breast cancer, those are also associated with prostate cancer risk. And so if men are young enough when they're diagnosed, we typically will also screen for BRCA uh, genetic changes. And or if they've got family members with a strong family history of uh, BRCA related or BRCA related uh, diseases, then we'll also start to screen those patients earlier as well. And doctor, you mentioned African-American men are more likely to get prostate cancer. Do we know why? We don't know why for certain. And there's actually a stronger body of literature over the past five to six years to suggest that uh, the social determinants of healthcare play a stronger role than we thought in some of that disparity between African-American and Caucasian men developing prostate cancer. So access to healthcare is, is a pretty important risk factor in terms of the, the age of diagnosis and the timing of diagnosis and the grade of diagnosis. 
Uh, and so that there's uh, there's some subtleties associated with, with those differences which haven't really been figured out yet entirely. Uh, but we the answer is we don't know exactly what those genetic differences are also that may be at risk. And doctor, how do you diagnose prostate cancer? Prostate cancer is typically diagnosed with a prostate biopsy after you have a suspicious either exam uh, or suspicious uh, PSA test, that, then you move on to do biopsy. And the biopsy can be either done in the office or can be done in the operating room. Uh, when it's done in the office, traditionally it's done with an ultrasound probe that goes up the rectum. Um, the prostate gets numbed and then we typically will sample the prostate either between 12 and 16 times depending upon how risky that patient is. Or if it's done in the operating room, typically the patient's put to sleep and a prostate biopsy is done through the skin between the anus and where the scrotum is, that area we call the perineum. So that's called a perineal prostate biopsy. Now, when men hear all this, is it difficult to get them into the office to perform these things or perform these screenings? Because we know how it can be. I'm being PC about um, that. <laughs> Uh, well, once they, you know, it's, it's it's once they're part of our job as physicians, I think, is to create that environment where they feel like they can have those conversations about their risk, where they can speak freely, where they can uh, explain what their apprehension is, either about doing PSA screening or about doing prostate biopsies. Anything we do in medicine is associated with risk, and so it's our job to navigate that risk and also explain why things are the way they are in terms of risk versus not risk and kind of weigh the, the, the balance there. And doctor, is the PSA level always accurate or is it sometimes necessary to kind of do a repeat, if you will? Uh, we typically recommend repeat if there's a suspicious level. That being said, uh, years ago when I was training, the PSA cutoff used to be four for as an indication to do a prostate biopsy. And these days there's no quote normal PSA. Uh, PSA uh, can be elevated for a number of reasons. It can be elevated for prostate cancer, but it can also be elevated for prostate infection, or it can be elevated because of benign growth or normal aging male growth of the prostate. Um, so there's three main causes of elevation of that PSA test. So it's always important to repeat, and it's always important to have that discussion with your urologist about how risky it is to have prostate cancer versus those other two uh, potential diagnoses. And I asked that because my uncle's very healthy and I believe he's 81. My guess is 81, 82. And uh, his numbers are always elevated. We talk about that. And he gets checked and everything is fine, but it's always an alarming thing to see for him. For sure. And again, obviously, it depends on what his numbers are and what his trend is. Uh, typically, we don't like to use one number all by itself. So if you've got a high number, but that number is stable, that's more reassuring than a number that is continuing to go up on the rise. Um, the other thing to know is that typically, if you're diagnosed with prostate cancer after the age of 80 uh, with a stable PSA, it's got a very low likelihood of being a cause of mortality. And most of the screening guidelines recommending to stop PSA screening in and around the, between the ages of 70 and 75, depending upon how healthy the, the patient is.